ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯ ಪಾತ್ರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯ ಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಯಾವೃತ್ತಿರ್ಮನಸಿ ಮನಸಾ ಜಾಯತ ಸಂಸ್ಮೃತಿಸ್ತೆ ಯೋ ಯೋ ಜಲ್ಪಸ್ಸು ವಿಭೋ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಂತೆ ಯಾಚೇಷ್ಟಾವಪುಷಿ ಭಗವನ್ ಸಾ ಭವೇತ್ ವಂದನಂತೆ ಸರ್ವಂ ಭೂಯಾತ್ವರವರ ಮುನೆ ಸಮ್ಯಗಾರಾಧನಂತೆ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ವಿಚ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಣವಾಳ ಮಾಮಿನಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಟು ದಿ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷು ಪಡಿ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷು ಪಡಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಸೊ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿ ದಿ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ರನ್ ಯು ಥ್ರೂ ದಿ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ just uh, go through this because i have i had prepared this especially for this purpose uh, is this slide visible yes. yes so we have covered all these aspects in detail that is the supreme lord narayana his nitya bhuti and leela bhuti and the primary wish of the supreme lord is that even those bonded jivatmas currently languishing in the leela bhuti that is the material world should come to vaikuntha and enjoy the same bliss as others already are doing like the nitya muktas like <coughs> ananta garuda vishwasena and so many other jivatmas who have entered the supreme lord's abode this is possible only when they become the recipient of the divine grace of the lord and for them to become eligible to do so the bonded jivatmas need to be empowered for this purpose they are granted the facility of a body and sense organs then we come to the green box the knowledge of the vedas and their subsidiaries that they need to know by using their body and sense organs was also imparted to the world but this could facilitate only a fraction of society as these are not in the reach of the common man and as a result of this situation the three rahasya mantras that are universally accessible by given were given by the supreme lord himself and this we have already explained the fivefold principle that is the artha panchaka prapyasya brahmano roopam praptushya pratyagatmanah indra vande ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಉಪಾಯ ಫಲ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೆ ತಾಪ್ತಿರೋಧಿ ವದಂತಿ ಸಕಲಾಸಪುರಾಣಕಾ ಮುನೇಶ್ಚ ಮಹಾತ್ಮನೋ ವೇದ ವೇದಾಂತ ವೇದಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟ
and these are the three <coughs> rahasyas the ashtakshara mahamantra also known as the mula mantra or mantra raja dwaya mantra the mantra ratna and charama shloka the three charama shlokas which have already been explained by me in the earlier classes and now we come directly to the first sutra <coughs> So what is the purport of this sutra? The literal meaning is as follows. I have just given it immediately below the sutra itself. The sutra is highlighted in blue color in italics. I will be following the same convention throughout this series of lectures. And immediately below the blue color text which gives the sutra i will give the literal meaning of the sutra a mumukshu which means person desirous of attaining liberation has to th know three rahasyas this is the <coughs> literal meaning of the sutra so who is about mumukshu so swami manavala mamuni very beautifully describes how this word is derived. He gives the etymological derivation of this word. So he says, Muchul Ramokshane Ire Dhatu. I will just read out that portion. Even just listening to the what we call as the Sri Suktis. So in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya there is a very unique tradition where all the important aspects are prefixed with the word Shri or Tiru. So the Suktis are the words of our Purvacharyas which have been documented are known as Shri Suktis. And <clears throat> the book, books that they have authored, for example a physical book is known as a Shri Kosha. So all the important aspects are prefixed with the word Shri. So this, these are the Shri Suktis of Swami Manavala Bhamuni. So he says, Mumukshuvak Ariyavendam Rahasyam Moonru Mumukshuva Hiran Mokshatile Itchaye Udayana Navan Mukshadra Mokshane Re Dhatu Ittal Samsara Vimojanatil ாமத்தையாசாரிவர்த்தியில்ிரந்தவனை so very beautifully he delineates what the word mumukshu actually means so in this context we have to understand two or three important aspects the first aspect is how is the word mumukshu derived it is derived from the root muchulre which means mokshane that means liberation so in sanskrit it is to be noted that certain facilities are available to convey in a single word what requires many words to convey in other languages. For example, the word mumukshu means moktum michuhu mumukshu. In English, we call it as the desiderative form. So, mumukshu means a person desirous of attaining moksha. So is it all, is that all that is intended to be conveyed by the word Mumukshu? No. There is something more that needs to be conveyed here. <clears throat> so here it says, Ittal samsara vimotanatil itche pirandavanakke engira padi. So a person who wants to transcend the cycle of births and deaths and just a moment. 
who wants to transcend the cycle of births and deaths and then not only that he wants to attain the supreme lord and enjoy unalloyed bliss and here swami manavala mamuni makes a distinction between an atma prapti kama and mukshu so in sri vaishnava sampradaya there are two types of liberations we can say in according to one school of thought that is a mumukshu or a for example a muktatma who has attained moksha and a kaivalya a person who has attained kaivalya though from the point of view of sanskrit language purely from the language point of view both are used as synonyms because the amarakosha mentions mukti kaivalya nirvana shreyo nishreya samrutam mukti kaivalya moksha etc are all considered to be synonyms but when we actually see this from the point of view of the vishishta advaita philosophy and also shri vaishnava religion or sampradaya there is a huge distinction between a mukta atma and kevala a person who has attained kaivalya it is mentioned in our sampradaya works that a person who attains kaivalya does not enter the portals of vaikuntha he is not admitted to the vaikuntha but he also enjoys the bliss of the jivatma only or the individual soul only even the individual soul is considered to be of jnana ananda ek swarupa that is he is also of the nature of knowledge and bliss but a kevala he is considered as a person who does not wish to and therefore who is not entitled to enjoy the bliss of the supreme brahma so that is why manavala mamuni makes a specific distinction he says atma pramanu prapti kamanu kum mukshutvam unde ahilam ividatil avan vivakshitam anni even though a person who desires to attain kaivalya has delineated in the shri vaishnava sampradaya he is also a mumukshu because he also wants to transcend the cycle of births and deaths but such a person is not the target audience of this work of the mumukshu padi because he does not require the knowledge of the rahasya rahasya prayas he has his own path to follow though he is also a mumukshu in letter not in spirit because when you apply the literal meaning of the term mumukshu one who wishes to attain liberation from the cycle of births and deaths such a person is not targeted here because he his path is totally different he wants to enjoy the bliss that is that is associated only with the jiva and therefore he will forever continue to live in a location that is not associated with vaikuntha there is not much clarity on this aspect where he is how he is how he becomes etc there is some information because it's a very abstract thing my acharya used to say all these what knowledge is or all these concepts are extremely abstract concepts so we may not have the necessary words to convey what they actually need to convey because we don't have words that actually denote such abstract entities or abstract issues or aspects so therefore there is a very gross differentiation between a person who wants to attain kaivalya and a person who wants to attain moksha in the real sense of it so swami manavala mamuni clearly distinguishes between these two 
and says a kaivalya arthi or a person who wishes to attain kaivalya is not intended to be addressed here so he is not considered mumukshu in this context ahayal mumukshu in girade bhagavat prapti kamataya samsara nivrittil ichchai pirandavanai how beautifully manavan mamni states he states as he is mentioned in this slide you can see a person desirous of attaining supreme god and liberation from the material world or attaining the uh, attaining liberation from the material world and uh, or i would like to put it like that rather a person desirous of liberation from the material world and attaining the supreme god that is how it should be actually captioned so he actually gives up the material world he wants to give up the material world with the sole aim of attaining supreme god that is how a mumukshu is defined so when we say we define something for example as far as indian philosophy is concerned or concepts of indian philosophy is concerned we say if you have to define an elephant how do you do it you mention its unique aspects or aspects that are exclusive to that entity for example if you have to define an elephant the western methodology of doing so as we have studied it is you say it has four legs it has two eyes it has a, a stomach it has a tail etc etc and also a trunk whereas the indian methodology of defining an object is you need not mention the common aspects so for example if you say four legs four legs are common to cows they are common to buffaloes they are common to deer they are common to uh, horses and so many other animals so you mention only the unique and exclusive aspect of that entity which says if it has a trunk it is an elephant so no other animal possesses a trunk and therefore you say that the trunk an elephant is defined by its trunk all the elephants have a trunk and other than an elephant no other <coughs> animal possesses a trunk similarly when you say we define something it has to be very clear cut it has to be exclusive it has to be comprehensive so swami manavan mamuni defines what a mumukshu is he says a person desirous of attaining the supreme god through liberation from this material world and then he says this mantra this uh, mumukshu is defined by three aspects which we will mention later which we will be mentioning in the next slide and before that he says why is why are you mentioning the tirumantra first the answer is the tirumantra gives the most important knowledge it imparts most important knowledge about three aspects svagnyanam prapaka gnanam prapya gnanam mumukshubhi jnanatrayamupadeyam etadanyanna kinchana a mumukshu should strive for nothing other than these three that is knowledge of the supreme lord narayana knowledge of himself that is the jivatma or individual soul and thirdly knowledge of the means for the jivatma to attain the supreme lord this is generally mentioned in this format that is tirumantra rashtakira mahamantra gives the knowledge of the supreme lord mantra ratna or the dvaya mantra gives the knowledge of the jivatma and the charma shloka gives the knowledge of the means that is prapatti but it is not exclusively like that it is generally mentioned in this format and then further what is the purport of the present sutra the purport of the present sutra is it delineates 
the adhikari or the target person or person fit to study the current work and secondly delineation of the subject matter that is the three rahasya aspects so who is the adhikari or the person fit to study the current work we have noted some aspects of who a babukshu actually is further there are there is more to it than what we have already read now and that is mentioned in the second sutra which is as follows so before we complete the go to the second sutra i will just read out the other aspects manwala mahapuni has mentioned in his vyakhyana evam bhutana navanak ariyavendum rahasyam moonru endrade ivanak avashyam gnyatavyam ayullade swaroopopaya purusharthangalahayadum अवत्यरिंदरहस्यत्रयम् Word Rahasyam Moonro are the three Rahasyas which is as follows. Rahasyam Moonro Yendri Yivar Uddeshikirade Tirimantramam Dayamam Charamashtokam Mahira Yivattai Yennam Yennamidam Ede Suspashtam Yennamidam Ede Suspashtam So Yivar Uddeshikirade So what is he intending to say by, by saying the three mantras? It means the Raha Tirumantram, Dvayam and Jaramashtlokam. And then he says, why are these called as Rahasyas? Ivattai Rahasyangad Engirade Sakala Vedanta Saratha Pratipada Kataya Paramaguhyangad Ahayade So why are these called Rahasyas? As I mentioned in our Indian tradition, especially in the Shri Vaishnava tradition, there is a very important aspect that we are able to make any long matter <clears throat> we can actually represent a very big issue in a very concise manner and once again we can expand the same into a so suppose that you have a small capsule so what is mentioned in that capsule can be expanded into an ocean of knowledge. And once again, the ocean of knowledge can be concisely mentioned in a small capsule. So for this, I would just like to mention an, an anecdote. So I am sure you have heard about Anangaracharya Swami who was given aptly the title of Mahamahimopadhyaya and also as Jagadacharya. Once it seems he went to Banaras, which was in those days the seat of learning. Of course, still in his college continue to be there. At that time, at that time, when a scholar worth his salt used to arrive at Banaras, a huge assembly of scholars would be created. And the person who is said to be a great scholar would be invited to that assembly. And <clears throat> he would be asked to give a talk impromptu on a topic that would be mentioned at that moment only. So there will be no previous even information or even inclination about what the topic would be when the person actually arrives at the hall or he is not given any prior intimation. So Anangaracharya Swami, he went there and he was seated on a pedestal considering that he was one of the greatest scholars and the subject was announced it was as follows 
Sindhau Binduhu. That was the subject. That is a drop in an ocean. So Annangaracharya was a genius par excellence. He knew almost everything as far as the Indian tradition, the Vedas, Divya Prabandhas, their commentaries of the Vedas, commentaries of the Divya Prabandhas. He had he had uh, unmatched scholarship in all the Sanskrit works, all the Tamil works, and also the Samanya Shastras like Nyaya, Vyakarana, Mimamsa, etc. So he found it very easy to give a talk on Sindhu Binduhu. So anybody can actually, even an ordinary person for that matter, can actually go near an ocean and pick up a small drop of water and drink it or do whatever he wants. After giving a wonderful lecture for one hour about the topic Sindhu Binduhu, he said, now I will take the liberty of modifying the subject slightly and giving one more talk or adding one more talk to what I have already spoken. And he said, the topic is Bindau Sindhu. How an ocean is encapsulated in a small drop. And having said that, he wonderfully spoke about how in the pranava, the entire Vedic knowledge is contained, and how in the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, the entire knowledge of Vedanta is contained. So people were flabbergasted. They were so they did not have anything to say. They were speechless. And afterwards, all of them, without any hesitation, without any argument, conferred the title as Jagadacharya and also Mahamahimopadhyaya Arjun. So this is how it is. So we can say that Bindau Sindhu, in a small drop of water, a huge amount of knowledge is encapsulated. Or to put it in modern terms, we have a small capsule. So we all know that today we are studying the entire virus of this coronavirus that has uh, pervaded the entire world, killing more than 100,000 people, or rather 250,000 people as we stand today. Scientists have authentically mentioned that the entire coronavirus is not heavier than half a gram. So you can see how half a gram of virus can affect millions of people all around the world. So the power of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra is such that it can liberate millions and billions of people, provided they actually do Japa and also do the Arthana Sandhana or concentrate on the meaning and also chant it as per, as per the procedures. So this is how a huge amount of knowledge is encapsulated in this context. So Manavada Mamani says, here, why is this so important? He says, Ivatrai Rahas Jangalam Girade, Sakala Vedanta Sarartha Pratipada Kataya, Paramaguh Yangala Hayade. So Sakala Vedanta Sarartha Pratipada. He says, this Rahasya Trayas, or these three mantras, <coughs> comprehensively give information about all the aspects that are mentioned in all the Vedantas. That is the Upanishads and the subsidiary texts. And further, they are to be protected in a very secretive manner. So how these are called as rasyas, I have already explained them. So they have to be protected in a very secret manner. And then he says, Ahaivakyattal adhikari nirdeshamum adhyatavya nirdeshamum panni arudinarayati As shown in this slide, this
B. The purport of the present sutra is delineation of the adhikari and delineation of the subject matter that is the three rahasya aspects. Next we come to the second sutra. Adil Prathama Rahasyam Tirumantram. Among them, that is the three rahasyas, the first rahasya is Tirumantram. This is, <coughs> this is the literal meaning of the sentence or the sutra. Why is Tirumantram called the topmost priority? Why not Daya first and then Tirumantra? Or why not Charama Shloka first and then Tirumantra and Daya? Or why not Charama Shloka first then Daya and then Tirumantra? What is the logic behind mentioning Tirumantra in the beginning? So, Manavala Mamani says in a very beautiful manner, I'll just read out this and then explain the slide. <coughs> In the <clears throat> in the rahasya treatilum, Pratama rahasyam made in the mahi, made in the makan chai, akan chai re rudichai hirar, Adil Pratama rahasyam tirimantram in re Adavadi and the rahasya treatilum wait the kundu, you adhikariki, Pratama yata yamana. Rahasyam Swarupayatat Nepanamai Yajopa de Vipagate Paripurnama Pirepicum Adana de Adana Terimantrum in Gay Ananyar Hesheranatum Ananyar Heshetum Ananya Sheranatum Ananya Hogetumahida Akar Trait the Yumpertipadi Kayade Jetana Swarupayatat Nepertipadana Paramai Taranagunat Yajo Pade Vipagatim Suspectama Pratipadia in Rulla Mantratale Susichitamana Swarupati Udevan Udevan Kire Matre Rehassing Lirendalum Pratipadi Kepadahira Upayope Ingalil Apex Shade and Ipadi. So Manavala Mamani very beautifully says, Unless a person knows what is his own original nature, knows about himself. He cannot know what is the upaya and also what is the prapya. He cannot know what is the means and also what is the end. So first he has to know who he himself is. Who am I? Is the question that is actually answered by the Thirumantra. Thirumantra. So as I have mentioned here, it provides comprehensive knowledge or information about Swaswarupa, that is one's own original nature. And secondly, it is very important, it provides complete information about Tyajya and Upadeya, aspects that are to be given up by a Mamukshu and also those that are to be imbibed respectively. So what is Swaswarupa? What is one's own original nature? It has three components. Ananya Arahatum, Ananya Sharanatum, and Ananya Bhogyatum. So, this individual soul is worthy of belonging to him only. It is known as Ananya Arahatum in Sanskrit. So, there is a very beautiful story which all of you know. So, <clears throat> the Supreme Lord Narayana. He is very choosy actually. He actually accepts only that which is offered to him in an exclusive manner. And we have several stories that depict this aspect. Suppose there is an entity that is offered to him in Naivedyam or an offering. We are very careful that it has not been offered to him also before. And it has not been consumed by anybody else before. So many a times in, the, in our daily puja, there are some fruits are kept in a place. 
So before we offered them to the Lord, we asked the person who is in the house, or persons who are there in the house, as to whether it has already been offered or not. Already been offered elsewhere. Suppose we go to some other person's house, and there somebody gives us some fruits. Then we make sure that if we have to offer it to the Lord in our house, we make sure that it is not offered to the Lord of their house. And also, it has to be ensured, we ensure that it has not been offered to the Lord before in our house also. Because whatever is already offered to him, once cannot be offered to him again. So these are very important aspects that people like us who are, who are actually brought, brought up in a very traditional family ensure while they actually offer something to the Lord. And I am sure you people also have been taught about it. And there is a very beautiful statement by Swami Vedanta Deshika, who actually explains the happenings or pastimes of Lord Krishna in his uh, Yadava Bhideya, Mahakavya, a great literary composition called Yadava Bhideya. There he says, <clears throat> when the demoness Putana came to Nanda Gokula to actually give her milk to Krishna and kill him. Krishna actually enjoyed that milk that was given by Putana. Though he actually killed her and he killed her for her own good because it is mentioned specifically that he actually granted her liberation or moksha. But why he enjoyed that milk? So Swami Vedanta Deshika says, Putana came with a single-minded aim of offering her milk to Krishna and Krishna only, not to any, any other child who was there in Nandagu. So it was Ananya Arha. That is, it was, she thought that she felt that it belonged to Krishna only and then nobody else. So Swami Vedanta Deshika says, Stanyam Tadvishasam Mishram Rasya Masi Jagat Guru. Lord Krishna, who is the teacher or preceptor of the entire world, he immensely enjoyed the milk that was given to him by Putana because. It contained the most important component of the Ananya Arhatva or Ananya Arha. It is intended to be offered to him and him alone, not anybody else. Similarly, the original nature of this Jivatma is, it is worthy of belonging to the Supreme Lord and Supreme Lord only, not to anybody else. So this is Ananya Arhatva. The second aspect is Ananya Sharanatvam, which is the individual The second aspect is Ananya Sharanatvam, that is this individual soul is worthy of being sub subservient to him only. So Sharana is a person who has totally surrendered himself to the Supreme Lord and therefore is subservient. So a person, how do you actually de define a person who is subservient? What is subservience for that matter? If a person is subservient to me, what do I do? What does he do? He says, your wish is my command. So whatever I wish, he will do it. So this is the nature of being a subservient person. So this Jeevatma or individual soul is subservient or Sharana to the Supreme Lord only and not to anybody else. So it means it is not subservient to other deities, other demigods, other individuals or even sometimes, many a times what happens? A person who is addicted to smoking 
he is subservient to his cigars a person who is subservient to drinking he is subservient to alcohol so he is subservient to inanimate objects whereas if a person loves his wife the most and always lives for her sake then he is subservient to another jeevatma who is his wife similarly it may be wife or husband or whoever for that matter but ultimately an individual soul has to realize that his original nature is he is subservient to the supreme lord only because if a person is subservient to his wife how long can it be it can be only until he that jeevatma or individual soul decides in that body and his wife soul decides in her body because once this soul leaves this body there is no question of wife son daughter aunt uncle grandfather father mother etc therefore the individual soul is worthy of being subservient to him only and then ananya bhogyatva the individual soul is worthy of being enjoyed by him only so this is bhoktra bhogya bhava not only this individual soul becomes a bhogya and he becomes the bhokta he actually has to realize that he is an entity that is fit to be enjoyed by the supreme lord it already is so but it has to be realized by us and we should be voluntarily we should have that mindset to say that this belongs to you this jeevatma belongs to you and kindly have it you actually partake of this jeevatma that is what all the acharyas say amalvar says enadavi tanduinde the maximum i can offer is my own atma and then of course he says enadavi arya who is this atma who am i to offer it i can offer it only when i am the owner suppose i want to give this pen to <clears throat> shriman keshav das and say please have this pen for yourself i can do it only when this pen belongs to me i am the owner of this pen but when i offer this atma to the supreme lord who am i to offer because i am not the owner of the of my soul so then namal var says these are all different stages of sharanagati but ultimately i will not go into that detail because it has to be explained in great detail ultimately the individual soul is worthy of being enjoyed by him only so these aspects that are unique to the individual soul are well established by this unique mantra that is what swami manavada mamuni says in this in his commentary he says ada avade i have already uh, read that i will just read it once again and conclude today's class ananya arha sharanatvam ananya bhogyatvam ahira vakara treetayam pratipadikayale chetana swarupa yathatya pratipadana paramai tadana gunaman atyajyo pade vibhagatayam सुस्पष्टमाह प्रतिपादियानि मंत्रताले सुशिक्षित मान स्वरूप दिस इज वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेक्निकल टर्म दट इज मेन्शन इन श्री वैष्णव श्री वैष्णव संप्रदाय सो इट सेस देर इज अ वर्ड कॉल्ड स्वरूप शिक्षा वॉट इज दिस स्वरूप शिक्षा शिक्षा इज एजुकेशन so imparting of education that is associated with the nature of a shri vaishnava of course <laughs> i hope i will not be hurting the sentiments of anybody a shri vaishnava is defined as a person who never 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 engages in censuring another person he never engages in praising himself he never engages in vindictively behaving with regard to somebody so several characteristics have been laid down by pillaloka swami pillaloka acharya which comes in the dwaya prakarana he says 
പുറം പൂണ്ടാന പത്തുക്കിളയുടെ വാസനയോടെ വിടുകയും പേര് തപ്പാതെ പുണിന്തിരിക്കയും പേത്തുക്ക് തൊരിക്കയും ഹീ ഗിവ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ടെൻ ടു ട്വൽവ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് that are associated that have to be associated with the shri vaishnava so a true, a true shri vaishnava has to have all these characteristics he says param satvik node sahava sampannu hayam inda vaishnava adhikari ki avashya apekshitam <coughs> so even swami ramanuja acharya while he was about to depart depart for his divine abode he gave six commandments which i am sure many of you are familiar with he says patitva bhashyam tat pravachana mashatto shadarupidirishtadha etc kutim tat krutva tasmin yadugiri tate nitya vasati etc so he says the first duty as per the requirement of those days was as ordained by ramanuja acharya is <coughs> study the shri bhashya and also propagate it if that is not possible study the divya prabandhas and propagate them etc etc here a question arises as to why did he give more priority to shri bhasha rather than the divya prabandhas that's a very interesting discussion about which my acharya has given several new insights which i will not go into now but he says if that is not possible do this if that is not possible do it if, if that is not possible you go to melkote tirunaraayanapuram the divya desham i belong to and stay there having at least a small hut and then he also used to say and finally he says if nothing is possible you be subservient to another shri vaishnava and lead your life so velakudi varadacharya swami used to jokingly mention he shri vaishnava heard all these things he said he said okay what are them what are the commandments given by swami ramanuja acharya please let me know and his teacher said one if this is not possible to if the oh studying shri bhasha is very difficult i may not be able to do it so what is the next option and he said uh study the divya prabandhas and propagate them okay that is also a little bit difficult so he went on asking and finally it was mentioned for shri vaishnavan patkaril udangi vartitam being subservient to shri vaishnava and lead your life then immediately it seems the person remarked oh this is the most difficult thing of all let me forget about that i'll do the first option i'll take the first option itself that is shri studying the shri bhasha and uh, propagating <laughs> he used to jokingly mention that like why i am mentioning this is <clears throat> a shri vaishnava's main characteristic is mentioned by the word swarupa shiksha he should not engage in censuring any other shri vaishnava so when kuratalva the direct disciple of ramanuja acharya was uh, deprived of his eyes by the wicked chola king shri kuratalva never actually blamed ramanuja acharya or the chola king for that man for behaving so cruelly because his eyes were extracted and he was made blind and the height of shri vaishnava philosophy of a practicing shri vaishnava is he said that when he asked what is the boon you require he said nan petranan me naluram paravin naluran was the traitor who actually behaved like a follower of ramanuja acharya but who actually incorrectly exposed these people in the shaiva <coughs> to the shaiva chola king and he was instrumental in the eyes being gouged off from kuratalvan and periyanambi the acharya of ramanuja so kuratalvan said he has been instrumental in gouging off the eyes of the great periyanambi he did not mention about himself 
and Swami Periyanambi, he could not withstand, he was very old at that time. And he could not withstand the eyes being, uh, the pain of the eyes being God's love. Therefore, he actually leaves his mortal coil and he proceeds to the divine abode of Vaikuntha. But still, this Naluran has become a recipient of a very heinous crime. And he is sure to go to Naraka or hell. But Swami Kuratta Arman, he showed the height of the behavior of Ashti Vaishnava. He said, even Naluran should get moksha. That is my request or prarthana to the Supreme Lord Varadharaja. He says. And he says, why have I been deprived of my eyes at this age? Probably I should have seen a person who I should have seen and made fun of a person who has not actually <coughs> applied this Urdha Pundra Arpuriman in a straight way. Many a times we see people, young children, old people, who are unable to control their hand, etc., and apply the Urdha Pundra in a manner that is not straight. So we, saw, we call, uh, call it as Konal in uh, Tamil. So Purata Alvan says, why I have been deprived of my eyes? It is probably because I have, I have made fun of a Shri Vaishnava, having seen by my eyes when they existed about a person who has not applied the Thiruman in the proper manner. So this is the height of Shri Vaishnavism. Uh, Shri Vaishnava Adhikari who imbibes upon himself even since that he has not committed. Who actually says, probably this is why I have been granted this type of a <coughs> punishment. And he says, even the worst enemy should be granted liberation. So this is known as Swarupa Shiksha in Sri Vaishnava parlance. And that Swarupa Shiksha is provided by the Thirumantram. That's it. That is what Swami Manavala Mahamani says here. Swaru Pattai Udayavan Udayavan Kire Pattai Rahas Yengali Rendaram Pratiparikya Padahira Upayope Yengali Lapekshai Janipade Ahayal Swaru Payathat Nipratiparakamana Virimantram Pratama Rahas Yam Yendri Yenakkure Illai So there is no doubt regarding very explicitly, very boldly saying that Viramantra is the first Rahasya that a person, person has to know, has to understand. <clears throat> so with these words, I conclude today's lecture. So if there are any questions, you can ask them. Similarly, any observations and one or two questions I will try to answer today of the previous uh, uh, class provided they are shared with you. Swami, <clears throat> thank you very much. I was, uh, I was, I wanted to ask about uh, Kaivalya. In the beginning, you spoke about Kaivalya, and I wanted to ask about whether Kaivalya is a permanent. Yes. Uh, is permanent. As per the, please complete the question. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. Uh, I, okay, so my full question was: Is Kaivalya permanent? And where is the, Kai, the person or the Atma who is a Kaivalya person? Where is he situated? If he is, is he in the material world or the, or the spiritual world? He uh, is. Yes. And uh, we, have heard, we have heard that there's a difference between the Tenacharya Sampradaya, Deshika Sampradaya about this, uh, about this point. And uh, also there are also the... I, we, we have also heard about some distinction between a Karya Vaikuntha and Karna Vaikuntha, and whether whether the Chatusanas, the, the the four Kumaras who had had gone to Vaikuntha, whether they had gone to Karya Vaikuntha or Karna Vaikuntha, or whether they were Kaivalyas or whether they were not Kaivalyas, were they were they Prapanas or Bhaktas? This is my actually opinion. to be very honest. <clears throat> In a very honest way, I would like to answer this question. My guru used to tell, so suppose I tell you a story 
about a world that you have to you have totally not visited at all. <clears throat> Can you understand? It is very difficult to understand. That is the question. Because now, suppose I say a pen. I show this is a pen. And say this is, the word pen denotes such an object. And such an object is denoted by the word pen. So this is known as, the Shastras, it is known as Shakti Graha. Or the nature of the, knowledge of the nature between the word and the object or entity that it denotes. So these are grass objects which have mass etc. according to science. And they can easily be shown and say this is a pen. You call it by the word pen which has three alphabets P, E, M etc. In Sanskrit we define it in a, in a slightly different manner. We say they can be that is Dakarotare, Karotara, Kakarotara, Karotara, Nakarotara, Ikara. So, la, e, ka, e, and me, na, e, etc. But when it comes to abstract entities, it is very difficult. For example, I, I say time. Has anyone realized the exact nature of time? It is not an entity that can be showed like this. But we all the time refer to the aspect of time. Inherently, we have got some knowledge about time. So this is one of the, once again, what is the concept of time, what is the meaning of the word time, etc. Once again, it's very, very, very abstract. And we only have the knowledge of aspects that are used to measure time with reference to something. Without reference to something, you can never define or understand what time is as well. That is why he said, Kalarupi Bhagavan. It is synonymous with the Supreme Lord himself. Similarly, when you talk about God also, Ishwara, Vaikuntha, Lord Narayana also, the knowledge or the concept that we understand, it's very abstract. Many times my father keeps telling me, suppose I say, I give, there are all of you are artists. And I ask you to write, imagine a bird that is flying and write, uh, write it, uh, draw it. Each person's <coughs> drawing will be totally different from the other. Because my imagination of a bird is ima different from your imagination and your imagination is different from another person's imagination. So it's not like, even when I say imagine that a pen is there, I will imagine a black pen, you may imagine a blue pen, another person may imagine a red pen. So even the concept of God or Supreme Lord, Narayana or whatever we tell, I may think about the icon of Lord Shabbapillai or Narayana when the word Narayana is mentioned. You may think about Varadharaja, you may think about somebody, you may think about Lord Venkateshwara and Tirupati. Or for a, he may not think about any icon at all. So, from what my Acharya used to tell me, there is a lot of confusion. It is not incorrect. Confusion is justified. Because we don't have any proper concept of what Vaikuntha Loka is as of now. So, some people say, when we say, Sadeva Soumyadama Grazi in the Vedas, what happened to Vaikuntha? Does it apply to Vaikuntha or not? Then Nitya Vaikuntha, Karya Vaikuntha. So many theories have been floated. I will not say they are incorrect. I will not say they are correct also. So all I would like to say is, as far as Kaivalya is concerned, they have mentioned that it is not Vaikuntha Loka. It is something other than Vaikuntha Loka, but it is eternal from then onwards. And as far as Vaikuntha Loka is concerned, we have a very vivid and uh, explicit description of Vaikuntha Loka by Ramananda Acharya himself in the Vaikuntha Vidya. But here also it very clearly says, Divya Varana Shata Sahasra Vrte, Divya Kalpakata Rupa Shobhite, Divya Odhyana Shata Sahasra Koti Bhira Vrte. Divine Gardens of how many numbers? Shata Sahasra Koti. 
hundred thousand billions or crores, as we English people say, one crore is ten million. So hundred thousand crores, or hundred thousand, or hundred thousands of billions, or trillions, or whatever you call it. That means they are endless. So that is why it is just mentioned in the Purusha Sutta. Padosya Vishwa Bhuta Ni Tripadasya Amrita Ni. It's called Tripad Vibhuti. It is thrice the entire, all the things that are put together in this world. So I will not go into Karya Vaikunta, Nitya Vaikunta, that Kaivalya, that this, because my, my Acharya used to, even many a times, he used to scold us. Don't discuss too much about something that we are unable to decide as of now. Even the nature of the Jiva Atma, nature of the Paramatma has to re be realized internally. As all the Alvar say, as Pilagoka Acharya says, as Madhavana Mahamani says. These are all education to our intellect. Based on the intellect, we have to do Japa, which will culminate in Jnana and then have a, enable us to have realization. So this is the training to the intellect that is given to perform those things in a logical, in a, with a very passionate, in a very passionate and with a very, in a very devoted manner. So uh, uh, these discussions will lead us, lead us nowhere, Karya Vaikunda, Nitya Vaikunda, that, this and all those things. Because it is totally, it does not give us any uh, verdict as far as the final issue is concerned. So I will not go into that. This much is mentioned. Let us have that much as of now. Because there are no words that are available to us to describe something that is totally otherworldly. Even if it is mentioned, it is based on our experience of today's world only. Which, which does not hold any water once we leave this world. So I will I'll stop answering that question in that manner. And my Acharya used to say, these are all tapogamyas. These can be understood only by tapas and not by any discussion. But we can have what, what is mentioned by our Purvacharyas in this manner without any doubt and rely upon that and do what we have to do practically. So uh, just uh, one small thing. I understood that. So I understood there's a difference between Tanacharya Sampradaya and Deshika Sampradaya on the permanence of Kaivalya. And so, so therefore, uh, for Sri Vaishnavas, Kaivalya, for Tenacharya, if you think it's permanent because it's uh, a form, you said uh, it's there in Amarakosha as a type of mo moksha. Um, yeah, Amarakosha does not distinguish because it deals with the uh, synonyms only. <clears throat> but actually, they are not synonyms because though they refer, in effect, they refer to the same entity. For example, Amara, Amir, Jara, Deva. So Amaras are those who, they are, all these things refer to demigods. Amara means those who do not have death. Nirjara means those who do not have old age. So are they both the same? No. And the Deva means they are those, those who are shameful. So they all refer to demigods, but not they are not actually from the purest point of since they are not synonymous. So, so for so for Sri Vaishnavites, especially Ten, Tenacharya Sampradaya followers, there this Kaivalya is a dead end, because if you if, if, is, if, is if, like a dead end. If you that, cannot if you cannot come back, and you cannot is, is what, and you cannot is, go forward. Yes, no, there is no question of forward. That is it. That's all according to our Sampradaya. But whether he possesses a body at that time, whether or not, it's not clear. And <clears throat> one more very important aspect is our Acharyas, though they knew, my Guru used to say, they have not revealed certain things because we, will not be, we are not capable of understanding. So my Acharya used to give an example. So a young boy comes and he sees a, a radio where some music is coming. Then he will ask, uh, how is it there is somebody sitting inside the radio and singing? So we say, yes, sir, say, yes, yes, somebody is sitting there. They are somewhere, sitting somewhere, but it is coming here. We give some very trivial answer. Because you cannot explain the entire mechanism of how radio waves are carried. And, and there is a radio station where the music is recorded. 
from there how it is coming and so even now it don't understand even now i don't understand how the internet is helping us do all these things we vaguely understand that so we are connected to satellite and it comes but do i know how internet works the entire mechanism none of us know of it matter fully because we are not expected to know we just use the fruits of technology and don't don't enter into uh, the technology itself so they have mentioned something to quench our uh, uh, curiosity ultimately it is by tapas or by jhana and by realization only we have to know the reality so swami a small thing you was mentioning about about offering of uh, naivedium that you have to yes. be very careful that uh, naivedium has not already been offered to shriman narayana before yes. or or it is not been offered to some uh, to is or, or not been offered to some other anya devata or whatever yes. no, normally what i see is that the the parohit the person who is offering makes a break in the skin of the fruit so that people at least see that uh, the the, yes, the yes. fruit is break broken but another thing i wanted to mention that is in so, some as there are some aspects in sri vaishnavism where something is offered to someone first and then offered to shri man narayana like the garland of andal or like the <laughs> this is uh, yeah, that is that is because the lord himself wanted it to happen as we say in case of shabari also in ramayana yes so she actually if you purely from the point of view of knowing whether it is sweet enough and it is nice it seems that she it is mentioned that she even we call as yachal or she consume some portion uh, of it that there is no equal word of yachal in english because that concept does not exist in western uh, culture so it seems that she took that some portion of the fruit and then offered it to the lord but once again because it was ananya and she did it from purely from that point of view it was greatly appreciated by lord ram so you got to the you explained the three different points these three different points that uh, first of all uh, that uh, uh, we should not be we are only subservient to to shriman narayana only like that but we see in vanashrama dharma so many people in vanashrama dharma they are subservient to other people in a social manner the hus- the wife is subservient to the husband the the shudras are subservient to the upper dwija classes so uh how 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 is this how do propanas exist in a vanashram very, system it is very clear so as far as a person is considered to be in his body as a son he has certain duties to fulfill as a husband or a wife or a father or sister or brother so we call it as sharira nibandhana and atma nibandhana so on account of possessing a particular body he has to be subservient to his father he has to obey his father and all this obey his acharya obey his wife also if she is telling the correct thing as far as the atma is concerned it is subservient only to supreme lord so on account of possessing a body you are subservient to so many people which is also very much in line with the shri vishnu sampradaya there is no contradiction between the two in fact they are complementary <laughs> because shri vishnu's father also is supposed to be if he is a shri vishnu as a shri vishnu if he is subservient to his father also it is most acceptable because we say ultimately the lord fancies that is at the next level when we go to a different dimension different paradigm the lord loves those who love his devotee more than those who love him himself as we have seen in the case of madhura kavi alvar that is the height of shri vaishnavism where he says verunnum nadari and i don't know any any deity other than namadvar himself he specifically says and he has never sung even one stanza about any 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 deity any lord narayana any form of lord narayana he has sung only about namadvar but he is considered to be the height of shri vaishnavism and he is included in the group of alvars so 
the that is why he says so suppose i like somebody then i feel if he comes to my house i feel my wife should take care of him very well or somebody else whom i like he they should be take, taken care of by my wife very well they should be offered food at the proper time they should be offered proper place to sleep they should be made comfortable it is because that person belongs to me similarly the lord says i will he will value a person who is devoted to his devotee rather than more devoted to himself that is the next that is what is called as antibopa anishta which we will come to in due course so uh, on this theme of uh, of that this, the atman the individual atman belongs to the supreme lord in fact everything belongs to the supreme lord only so we are we are we are told to perform property to surrender to the supreme lord but actually how can one surrender something that someone doesn't own how is how is it possible to surrender something if we have we have we have our idea is that we have that we are ourselves our own masters but uh, so, so that, is, that is the that is the height of shri vaishnavism when you realize when you have when you the moment you realize that this atma does not belong to you then it means prapatti has already happened <laughs> so until you know you feel that you have some independence with regard to your atman you are supposed to do prapatti so that is the height of shri vaishnavism that is the difference between the tanacharya sampradaya and vadagalai sampradaya where you say that is why that is a very 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 deep question which cannot be answered in one word but uh, i will i will deal with that in the next class or we can discuss that is to be discussed in great detail but it's a very valid point which i will explain or uh, we can discuss in the next class and and you were mentioning that we should not criticize any any other person especially shri vaishnavas um but when we if we are studying shastra like shri basuras or whatever we are studying and we are preaching that we are trying to teach others that uh we will we encounter so many people who have uh following different uh, philosophies who have other paths and how how is it possible to teach uh the proper path to people without criticizing other path and without criticizing that person so criticizing you what do you mean by criticizing <laughs> i explained it recently in the shibhasham class how does ramanandacharya refute the advaita philosophy what does he what are the words he uses <clears throat> he doesn't say it is trash <laughs> to put it in english <clears throat> he say he doesn't say it is wrong or something like that. of course he he doesn't use any unparliamentary word like some uh, authors of our ancient works have used he even when he criticizes the advaita in the maha siddhanta in the beginning he says atma yathatya vidhi anadarani he uses a very 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 beautiful expression he says these views should not be respected by those persons who know the truth how beautifully how balancedly he has criticized the advaita so he says while refuting the advaita philosophy he says atma yathatya vidhi anadaraniyam very very carefully he says these views which are propounded in the mahapurana paksha should not be honored as authentic by those who know the truth who know the truth about the atma so he never says this is wrong this is false <clears throat> or use any bad word when he actually criticizes and also khandana is the word i am sure you have heard about it. come across the word khandana have you come across the word khandana <laughs> yes <laughs> so it is refutation one of my teachers very beautifully explained what is khandana 
Khanda means part in Sanskrit. So Khandana is what? It is known as Apurnatva Jnapana. So when you say you refute something or you do Khandana of a theory, what does it mean? It actually means that you are pointing out to the opponent that his view is partial only, nothing more than that. So you are not saying, censuring him in any manner. It is only that you are pointing out to him that his view is not comprehensive, it is partial only. Uh, yes, in so Ramananda Acharya is very careful when he refutes other Siddhantas. In English, there's a saying uh, that uh, that uh, half truth is no better than a lie. And yes. when 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 people go to the court, they ask them to tell the truth, but they also tell them to tell the whole truth. Yes. So a dwaita may be half truth. Yes. And therefore, it has to be refuted. Um, my finally, my final. Uh, Point. I don't know if other people have other points. Is you mentioned these six uh, orders of uh, Sri Padmanabhacharya? Can you give us the the sloka and the and the the, the six six things in in order? I think also this uh, <laughs> study Sri is the, easier easier than. I being. don't re recall the sloka as it is. I will. I will. You please remind me in the next class. I will start with them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So and. Uh, your questions, you have raised quite a few queries which I would like to answer, but uh, uh, today we don't have time. Probably we can have one session for a question answer thing only on a, a time that is very convenient to all of us. Thank you very much. <coughs>